Hello and welcome to My Starts and Crafts. I'm Libby and today I'll be showing you some cards using the Pink Fresh Studio stained glass set. Um, so here are the cards I will be making so that you can see them before we start. Um, and then I have the Pink Fresh Studio um, set here that I will show you. Um, and I have the die and then the hot foil plate along with the coordinating stencils. The stencils have three pieces to them as you can see here. Um, Today I will also be using the Pink Fresh Studio um, Painted Daisies stamp set and also coordinating the coordinating dies to that set. Um, I think this has five or six layers um, to it. Um, and so, yeah, this one has six layers to it. Um, and so you'll see me do some stenciling later. Um, but for right now, I'm going to stamp it onto some white cardstock and I made sure to um, add some powder tool to um, my, some anti-static powder to my cardstock so that um, I wouldn't have any sticking um, on the cardstock where I didn't want it. Then I inked up my stamp with Versamark and um, just stamped it down. You wanna make sure you give really good pressure so that um, all the areas stamp nicely and um, you get really good coverage. Um, so here I will stamp it. Um, again, I'm going to make two of these, so um, I stamped them twice. Um, next, I will add some antique gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp, and this is really, really pretty embossing powder. I'm also using my reverse tweezers to just hold it so that my fingers don't get in the way because the stamp takes up most of the area, and it was kind of hard to see on the cardstock, so I just wanted to make sure I... Um, could get nice coverage without um, getting it to stick everywhere um, and get in the way of the image. So once I have them all powdered up, um, I will heat emboss them. Um, you can see I just used like a scrap piece of paper to funnel that back in, which is a really, really great way to do it. And it's very inexpensive. Um, you don't need anything fancy for that. Um, I thought this area had embossing powder and I just missed it but um, I didn't stamp it well enough but in the end I don't think you can tell so it's not a big deal. Um, next I will just heat set this um, so that it is all nice and shiny um, and that there's no areas that are dull um, and yeah so I just heat set the whole image and I did it for both of them um, here and just making sure to get the whole image and make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Um, sometimes that's hard, but if you tip it in the light, um, you can see where it shines and where it doesn't. Um, and that's how you know. Um, next, I added some double-sided tape to some white cardstock. Um, and then I cut the, um, the uh, stained glass die from it. Um, and I just ran this through twice so that it would cut better. Um, and then I did um, a few panels of this. I think I did um, two. And then I will stack three of these together um, to form some really nice dimension for my card. I also made two of the stacked layering. So I have two of these with three layers on them um, so that I can make two cards with this. Um, it's good to mass produce when you're doing one thing at a time, so I decided to make two cards. Um, and they have slightly different color schemes, which you'll see when I do the stenciling later. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to layer that. And I did this twice, I just only showed one on the video because this is quite, of, uh, quite a longer video than I normally do. But I haven't been posting lately, my schedule has been really off. Hopefully I will get back on track with that and post some more videos for you guys. But um, for right now, um, I have this one out. Um, this one's a little bit longer and um, yeah, hopefully I'll get more again. Um, next I have my Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil Machine and I'm using the matte gold foil um, along with the uh, stained glass plate and um, there are many videos out there for the Glimmer Machine. I will try to link a good one from Jennifer McGuire in the top right corner if you are interested in learning more on how to do that. Um, but um, And I will hopefully show it in a later video more in depth. Um, I'm hoping to do something like that. Um, but I have just run it through and took it off. And then earlier I had foiled using the Opal 
hot foil and then I'm going to be using the solid hot foil plate. This one's also from Pink Fresh Studio and um, I'll just foil this design on there. So it's kind of the reverse, which is um, a good way to get more from your foiling experience and stuff like that. So you can see this one's really nice and kind of holographic. I use that matte gold foil again with some of these tiny sentiments. These are the mini everyday sentiments from Spellbinders. Um, and I really, really love them. There's just a bunch of sentiments for like pretty much anything you can think of. And it's just really, really great. Um, I'm also using the die from that to cut them out, which you'll see here. I only show cutting out one because this is already a long video, but um, I did cut them out cut all of them out and I didn't use them all today but once you're doing when you're doing one thing it's nice to do a bunch so that you can um, get a lot out of it um, I did spend a long time on this I did make four cards I think out of this so it probably took me a good two or three hours to do this I'd say um, it helped to like complete it but I did it over multiple days as you'll see um, it kind of changes as I go throughout. Um, here I am going to be using some Oceanside ink for my first stencil. I'm using all Concord 9th inks. Um, these ink cube, and then I have the ink cubes, and um, I'm also using blending brushes from Simon Says Stamp. Um, you will see a mixture of the smaller ones and the bigger ones, which really help me um, in this case because I'm doing some very selective blending because there's a lot of different openings on these stencils. Um, so see, you can see here that I came back the next day and started again. I'm using a Cricut mat actually. I cut that up and it works as a sticky mat and it works really, really well for stencils and in the misty and that kind of stuff. So you can see I have that there and it's just holding my stencil in place. Um, here for the smaller flowers and the centers, I'm using buttercup ink. And um, you could also do that bigger flower in the bottom right corner, um, the buttercup. I decided to do on this one, the grapefruit ink, I think. Um, we'll see about that um, in a minute. Also off to the left, um, I'm using the image from the stamp set. I just cut that out. And it's a nice guide to see um, what what colors go where. Um, so if you are stuck on some layering stencils, that's a really good tip and a good way to know where the color goes. Um, so next I'm going to take some grapefruit in again. You can see in that bottom right corner, I'm doing it a little bit heavier, but in all the other areas, um, I'm going to do a lighter um, application of this so I can add some layers to the flowers. Um, I am going to, for this one, I am going to uh, do kind of an ombre look. So there's some darker spots and some um, uh, like lighter spots and it kind of fades out um, in these flowers and leaves and stuff. And I think this just gives a really realistic and really beautiful look. But if you wanted a more graphic look, you could just stencil it all solid um, and not have much variation to it. I just think that's really, really pretty and gives a lot of texture. Um, and that's kind of what I was going for with this card. So you'll see me do that throughout. Um, I'm using the grapefruit again, and I'm just going in with a, a heavier hand um, on this one. Um, you will also see me bring in sherbet in a minute um, for the centers of the flowers and um, stuff so that I can get more of an orange look and a little bit darker for those centers. Um, but here you can see me, I'm going to go in the, with the next layer and I'm doing a much heavier hand for this. Um, the last one was really, really light. This one was more of a normal hand to heavy hand. Um, and so, yeah, then I'm going to just close that up and bring in the sherbet again in those centers, um, and a little bit, um, in those flowers. I tried to keep it mostly in the center, but a little bit on the flowers. Um, again, just gives more texture and dimension. Um, for the next layer, I am using sherbet, and I'm going to do that nice fade technique so it's not super dark and um, super dark or super light on the whole flower and just gives some good texture. Um, so I will put that away and I'm going to bring in the leaves stencil. This one I'm using sea glass for. Um, for this color combination, I use sea glass, oceanside, and peacock. Um, for these and I think they turned out really really pretty. I have another combination which I will show you later but again just adding that color to the leaves. Um, 
one thing to know is I must have lost footage for the stencils with the stained glass one, but you will see in the card that I used the grapefruit, the the grapefruit, the sorbet, and the buttercup inks um, on that, and I just filled in the stencils. Um, I didn't do too much of a blending technique. It was pretty simple. Um, and then I also used this, um, this, uh, this uh, color combination, the teal color combination, sorry, um, the sea glass, the ocean side, and the peacock. Um, I used that um, for the other one, the holographic one. And I just blended over that in an ombre going from sea glass to ocean side to peacock, just to give a nice blend and a little bit of something different. So you can see me, I brought in the ocean side and the peacock. For this next one, I used the same color combination for the flowers, which was, again, the grapefruit, the sorbet, and the buttercup. And then I brought in some different greens. I believe I used sprout, parsley, and clover for this. Um, and so I think you saw me bring in sprout for the leaves on this one. And then I will do something similar here. In the bottom right corner, that flower, I chose to do yellow this time just to give something different. Um, but you can choose whatever you'd like. Um, I loved both of these co color combinations and I wanted to try them both so I decided I would just stencil two while I was at it and I still love them both. I don't know which one is my favorite. They both are very different from each other but um, are both really really pretty. So yeah. Um, anyway I'm going to just do the same thing. So I have it sped up here. You can see um, it's going at a much faster pace. Um, everything I'm doing is the same. Um, especially for the flowers, the only thing I did different was the color of the leaves. Um, so I just sped it up so that you wouldn't have to wait because this is already a longer video. Um, so you can see me, I'm going to bring in the parsley next, which is a little bit darker. It's the medium shade that I chose. Um, and I'm just going to blend that out again, giving a nice faded look. And then I will bring in, I think, a little bit of clover. Oh wait, for the next stencil I brought in parsley first and then I added a little bit of clover. I just went in with a heavier hand on the parsley. And then I will bring in that clover there. Um, these do have a little bit of sh different shades of green so I was trying to blend them out there um, so that this one wouldn't be so um, much different from the rest of the green. But here are the two side by side so that you can see them. Um, and then I am going to bring in some cardstock here and I'm just going to layer them to give dimension. And here you will see the one that I stenciled with the layering stencils. Um, and so this is how it turned out. It was pretty basic stenciling, but I think this color combination is really beautiful with that gold foil. So I will add this to a card base here. Um, these are a two cards, so yeah. I didn't cut, I didn't trim too much down from this panel because I thought this one was just so pretty and I didn't want to um, take anything away from that. Um, next, you can see me layering up some cardstock, or not some cardstock, some really thin cardboard. And I use this a lot because it's super cheap and it uses what you already have. Um, I just cut it down to be the size that I need it to be and it adds great dimension and it's so much cheaper than foam, foam tape. Um, I just find it's really, really great for that. Um, for these sentiments, these are from Concord and Knight. They are the, um, I believe it's from the Happy Thanks dies, and I use the Thank You one. I really, really love these sentiments. They're really, really pretty. I just used some gold and some uh, holographic cardstock and um, added that to vellum, and um, I just layered these on top of these backgrounds, which was really, really simple because I had them pre-made. Next, I will layer these, the, um, the die cuts that I had cut earlier, um, and I will just add them on there. Um, next, you can see me, I'm working um, on laying it out and seeing how I want it to look. Um, I did this for the second panel before I put it together, just so that I could play with some different things. Um, I put them in opposite corners just to give something different to each of them. I added the flowers up on foam tape to give them dimension because I think dimension is really, really important in a card, um, but you can lay this down flat. 
Um, and then I have my little sentiments there. You can see them. And I will add a little um, bit of foam square on one side and then I will lay it down flat with some liquid glue on the other. Um, and then I'll just have that hanging off there. Um, and I will use the block to hold it down because it did not stick very well. And then I'm going to bring in my second panel and I will, again, I have this um, flower, I have these flowers on the foam tape and I'm just going to do it from the opposite corner um, just to give something different to the cards um, and experiment with some different styles. Um, I did change out the sentiment on this one because I didn't have a lot of room to put the sentiment, so I decided to do it like this. Um, I changed it to just happy birthday, and um, I will again add a little foam square on one side and then add the liquid glue onto the other um, so that it levels out. Um, I will remove this foam tape. Oh, first I am going to trim off this one card. Um, you could leave it on there, but I didn't want to get a bigger envelope, so I decided to cut these off. Um, and um, this still didn't stick, so I had to uh, work at it more, um, but I will layer it there. And I'm going to add this one to the opposite corner there, um, and I will add my sentiment. I guess first I cut this one off um, again. Uh, I didn't want a bigger envelope, so I decided to do this, but you could definitely leave it off if you wanted to. Um, and then I will bring in the happy birthday sentiment here. And um, I'm just removing my scraps, cleaning up my space, and um, then I will add that glue there. And apply it to the um, card there. I like it hanging off of the the floral image I feel like it connects the background to um the image and it just creates some really nice flow and uh dimension to the card um next I wanted to bring in in some embellishments so for this um this bluish card um here I have brought in some like just some like white sequins um and I'm just going to add those in some various spots here um I think it just brings something um, nice to the card and definitely shows that you worked really hard on it and paid attention to the details. Next I'm going to bring in these sequins. These are from Pink, Pink Fresh Studio. These are the matte gold metallic pearls and they're super super pretty and I thought they went really really well with the foiling and just the different colors on there so you can see that I'm just going to add them in some various spots. I also have these like white clay hearts that I will add. Um, I think they brought something super simple and cute to the card as well. Um, sorry, my head does get in the way throughout um, it. I wanted to make sure they were in the perfect spot and they are kind of hard to um, use, but I do have a jewel picker for this reason. Um, so you can see I'm just going to add them in some various spots. Um, three groups of three are really really pleasing to the eye and any odd numbers that you can do that's really really pleasing so you can see I have three three and two I think that um that's typically what I do or I do three and two and I think that just it makes my it makes me really happy when I do that um but you can play around with whatever you'd like to do so I'm just going to add those back and I added the white clay heart and these are done these are my completed cards, and yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and come back next time. Um, I will hopefully be posting more often. If you are interested in any of the supplies I use, check the description box below. Um, also, for more inspiration, follow me on my Instagram and Pinterest accounts at my starts and crafts. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.